Welcome everyone to another episode in the Perspective Drawing series. In this one we are going to take a look at some methods for filleting and cutting through volumes. So I'll begin by drawing out a box in two points perspective. Here these vanishing points will be off the page, but this isn't something you should not be used to by now. So I want to fill it the edges and corners of this box, and to do this I will have to draw a circle in each corner one on each side, at a size that depends on how large I want this fillet to be. Here it is the size of this ellipse which will define the size of the fillet, so have an idea of how you want this to be before you start drawing. First I'll draw a line around the box and this will determine the bottom of the square that I will use to draw these circles. So for instance here this is in perspective, so I'll estimate where this line would go. I then bring it over to the opposite side to create a square at the same size. Now I can divide these up to draw in a circle or an ellipse seen as we are working in perspective. So I need to do this around the entire box, drawing in an ellipse in each of the corners. It's as if we are drawing a cylinder around every edge. I could have used the duplication technique here to move that first square I had drawn across, but with practice you'll be able to estimate a suitable depth for your lines in perspective. It will also be easier to draw in ellipses. I know that I had a lot of trouble drawing them at the start. So here I have also extended that horizontal diameter around the box as well and on top of the box I have taken lines to and from the top of the vertical diameter. But now all of these have been drawn in and it's time to deal with these corners. I'm going to curve a line from the centre point of the ellipse to the point on top of the box where those lines connecting the top of the ellipses cross each other and I will do this for each of them. So because I have filleted this, I have created some new corners for the box lower down and I need to take a line from this to that same point as the other curves went to. Finally, as I outlined this, you should be able to understand it more clearly. Now in this next example, I'm going to fillet a cylinder, but first I need to draw one. I've been through this before in a previous episode, I draw out a box at the same height as I want my cylinder, I draw an ellipse on the top and bottom plane and then join them up. Now here is the cylinder that I want to fill it and I need to decide on how large I want this fillet to be so that I can then decide on how to do this. Now there's going to be two things here which will determine the size of this fillet. One is how small the circle on top will be once it has been filleted and one is the point at which this fillet will start. So once I have an idea of how I want this to be, I can start drawing it. I'll start by drawing in the smaller ellipse on this top plane. I do this within a square again and the centre point is the same as the cylinder. Now I will create a new plane within this cylinder and this will be where I want the fillet to be. Once I have this drawn out, it's a case of joining these up. I join this up with some curves at the dividing lines that I had drawn in to draw the ellipse and then I will outline this again so that you can see the final result. So moving on from filleting now, I'm going to show you some examples of how to cut through volumes. When you are drawing, you'll often find that you need to manipulate basic forms to build more complex forms, so these methods are always useful. Here I have a box in two points perspective, and I'm also going to add an inclined plane onto this as well. This example is very similar to Scott Robertson's example in his How to Draw book. Many of you know that I myself learnt a lot from that, so I always recommend picking that up. So here I have this box with an inclined plane on the front. Now, I want to cut a hole through this, meaning it will also cut right through this inclined plane as well, and that's when it becomes quite challenging to just draw directly. Instead, what I will do is draw the circle on the box's back plane, as that's a flat surface, and I will transfer it over to the inclined plane on the other side. So here I draw a square in the centre of this back plane and I divide this up to draw in the ellipse. Now, like I said, this is going to be a case of transferring these dimensions over to the other side here. So I will bring these lines down to the bottom plane and then across to this front plane. That then gives me the width of the square. 
I will also do the same up top, I project these lines upwards and across the top plane until they meet the inclined plane. Now I can join these up at this side, so now I have the sides of the square, but I also need the top and bottom sides. This can easily be done by bringing lines from each corner of the square across in perspective until they meet these lines that I have just drawn on the inclined plane. Now I have successfully transferred the square across to this inclined plane and as usual I can divide this up and draw in an ellipse. I now have a hole cut through this form. So let's take a look at one more example and here I will cut into a cylinder instead. So as always I firstly need to draw out my cylinder. I draw out a box, I draw out two ellipses on either side and I join these up to form a cylinder which is on its side this time. Now with this one I want to cut a section out of the side and this isn't as simple as it might seem because I also need to consider the form of the cylinder. I'm not going to be dealing with a flat surface. So I'm going to start by drawing out a square on the back plane of this box that I had drawn out to construct the cylinder. I'll find the centre and then start drawing this in. I also use that duplication technique here to make sure that each side of this square that I am drawing is the same size. It doesn't have to be perfectly centred but I like these examples to look nice. So now what I will do is transfer the sides of this square down to the bottom plane and across to the front plane. The same as I did in the last example. I guess for now I am just ignoring the cylinder. I bring these lines upwards and then I take some more lines from the corners of this square to the front plane. Now I know that this line isn't going to be on this front plane, it's going to be further back on the side of the cylinder. So here I bring it back a little bit by using the ellipses at either side. I draw a line in perspective back until it meets the edge of the ellipse here and I create a new line which is now in the right place. At this stage it's fairly simple to draw the upper top line of that square because I know that it will be set back in the same position as the bottom line of the square that I have just drawn and so all I do is bring it upwards. Now I have this square drawn out but it's still not correct because this square would curve with the form of the cylinder. If you take a look at the ellipses on either side you'll see that each side of its horizontal diameter is tangent with the face of the box that I had drawn to construct the cylinder. This line is also the centre of the square that I have drawn and so all I have to do is join this up and I already have some lines on the front plane from when I was finding the other edges earlier. I find the points where these cross and now I am able to correctly curve the edges of this square around the cylinder. I have now successfully cut out a section of this cylinder. So that wraps up this episode, I hope you enjoyed this one and found it informative, if you did then please leave a like. If you enjoyed the content I create then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.